Mighty God, Lord God, here we stand between heaven and earth, the vastness of your creation, O oh God, the wonder of your word, Jesus, Holy One, Mighty King. Our God is a great God. Hear, O nations of the earth, the Lord our God is one God. One Word, one Savior, one Christ. Here we stand between heaven and earth, seeing the vastness of God's glory, God's great kingdom. And we pray, Holy Father, one and only God who are in heaven, who wills to dwell within the earth and the creation that you have made, Holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in the earth. All its occupants and all its grandeur as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. You forgive us our debts as we forgive others. You lead us not into temptation. You are the deliverer of all evil. For you and you alone, Lord Jesus, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. You have created us in your likeness and in your image. Your way is perfect, O oh God. You dwell and abide in us. That we walk in the union of your will so we have no excuse. Great God, perfect God, holy God. In this, we praise you. We love you, we thank you. We worship, we adore you. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. He's doing a brand new thing. God is doing a new thing. You can take your seats, but stay right here with me. God is doing a new thing. Say it. God is doing a new thing. That's what he said. The word says, God said, I will. I will to do. I will to do. I will to do. I will. I will. I will to do a new thing. And the concept of mind, mind of flesh, mind of man, we perceive things in a way that God does not. We bring a divide between us and God. We say things like, that was him, but this is me. And I am not as he is. But the Lord said, I've made you in my image and in my likeness I've created you. Why do you separate yourself from the power of my word and the authority of my spirit? Why do you divide yourself as though you did it? Why will you not believe in the fullness of the spirit of the living God? And he sent his word and healed them and raised them. He divided them made them many nations, showed us wonders, and then gave us the interpretation so we could walk in the likeness of his form, his will, his wonder, his presence, and his power. Here we stand between heaven and earth and all of his vastness. How can we deny the greatness of our God and of his Christ? 
when of him, through him, and to him are all things. And what is the difference? For he is one, he is God, he is Lord. And we are his creation. And it's true, he didn't want heaven without us. So he made us, gave us our minute opportunity, days, seasons, hours, to proclaim his glory, his wisdom, and his power, to make known to the nations of the earth, and also to move the heavens of our God and his only Christ. Who can defy, who can deny? We can only occupy in his space. He did it, so can I, for it is no longer I that lives. But I have died to myself that Christ has made himself alive. In the image which he has formed of his own word and his own power. Great is God in this moment, this season, this hour. I will do wonders in the earth. So many have thought that the time has declared itself and said this is what it will be and what you see is all there is. But the Lord God himself has said, look and see what God has done and see what God is doing. I'll defy the restrictions of mankind. I'll defy their intelligence. I'll defy their resources, their silver and their gold. They claim that it belongs to them, but it is mine, says the Lord, and I'll do with it as I will. Out of the wilderness, I'll cause all that I've created to grow there, says God. Out of the vastness of the desert, says the Spirit of God, I will rain on it, and I'll cause fruit to bear witness that I have spoken and I have said it. So I will do in you, says the Lord. In the wilderness of your days, your times of shunning because you did not see what you asked of me. But did I not say, I've done greater than you have asked, and greater than you could know? Why are you afraid when I ask you to do what you can do, but simply to do it to the full? Can you not bring yourself before the Lord and bow down and say, you are the only one, the only God, the only Christ, do in me as you do in heaven? This is the day, if you will believe and say of the Lord, this is the hour of our God and of his Christ. This is the time where the Lord will make rulers of those that simply believe that he is God. Take what you have in your hand and sow it in faith to me, says the Lord, because the earth is mine, says God, and all the fullness thereof. And see that the Lord, out of the vastness of the soil, sand beyond the county of your mind and understanding will bring the invisible to life the secrets, the treasures, the mysteries of God and of his Christ and show you that you are the wonder that I have made and I have created you to become the dust that I have formed so I can create you in the image of my mind what is beyond you, what is it you cannot do Who will you believe is Lord? And upon whose word will you stand and say, God has said, I am the one that believes. Here I stand between heaven and earth and the vastness of all its glory. What can I say? It is the Lord's. God has created. God has made it. God has done. Believe me in this time. Where is the peril? Where is the sword? Where is the want? Where is the desert? For the Lord is the rain and the fruit of your lips. The sword is the word in your mouth. 
my word, says God, who can defy what God has said and who can overcome your faith. What can you do against the truth? Nothing, but only for the truth. For the image of God has borne his witness, and he bears his witness in you. One God, one Christ, one Lord, working in us all as one in himself. That God is glorified in all, and through all, and to all, he is made known. Don't be deceived because they say they do not believe. Oh, they believe, and they're afraid of what you believe. Can they intimidate you, interrogate you? Because they deny the power that I am. I will do a wonder in the earth, says the spirit of wonder. You bring me one, and I'll multiply it, says the Lord. Beyond your ability to count, says God. You stand where I say to stand, and I will be the footprint before you, says the Lord, that you cannot say, He has done it, but I cannot. But you will say, The Lord has done it in me and through me, and by His word, He has made me His will. can deny the hour of the Lord who can defy our God he and he alone has created all that you stand on even that which you yearn for the things you want the things you desire didn't the Lord create it and each thing for his purpose it's time and it's season I gather you together here today that you will hear the word of the Lord as I say. God is infinitive in his power, his wonder in his mind. There is no define, there is no deny. The Lord God is one. Both morning and night. Hear, O nations of the earth. I have said it. And I will perform what I have said, says God. I'll turn the nations upside down. I'll spin them again and again. As I have done, says the Lord, so they do not know the left from the right. But they will come to me and say, show us and teach us which is the way we should go. You believe and you think because you cannot see something is wrong, that it's a season to be afraid. The Lord says, I have made you dependent upon me as I did in the beginning of time, your time. Naked before God, yet God close your mind. The Lord makes the call. The Lord God, He is judge and ruler. The Lord God, He is peace of mind. You're standing on a treasure. The power of a treasure is not that it remains and not that you stand on it, but that you know where it is. And you know whose it is. It looks like few that stand and believe. But the Spirit of the Lord says, don't be deceived. There are more than you know. That will stand beside you and say, we believe. And not only do we believe God, but we believe you hear from God. We believe you bear witness of the one and only, the true. Did I not say I would make you witnesses in the earth for me? Did I not say stand still? 
and see the salvation of your God. You think what you have is so much and so vast and you can't afford to lose what is in your pocket. Don't you know I've only given you seed? The greatness is not what you hold, but who you hold me to be. And that I hold you. You make the small things great and you fret over them and say, what will we do? And what is the wrong that I have done? But the word of the Lord is not what you can do, but what I can do and look and see what I have done. Would you worship the Lord without restraint? Would you worship me without confinement? Would you say of the Lord, the expanse belongs to God and he has called me and set me between heaven and earth. What is it I cannot do? But the Lord asks you, what will you believe that I would do? Would you come to me and say, speak the word only? Or would you say, come and let me explain so you can understand? God knows what you have need of before you ask him. And not only does he know what you have need, but he's destined you before you knew what a need was. And so the call of the Lord today is to you that will believe and say, the Lord is a wonder in the earth, and he has made me to bear witness and testify of his wonder. What is it I cannot do? Why would you divide yourself from he who died for you and raised for you and gave you of his own spirit? Why would you deny the oneness of our God? How can he bear witness through you except you declare that it is no longer you but Christ that lives in you and you occupy the soil of his choosing? The earth of it's the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But I will you to know my glory in the earth, says God. That you believe is good. That you say is good. But that his presence is glorified in you is great. Great is the Lord. Greatly is God to be praised. And it is summarized in this. Our God is holy. Our God is one. Our God has made us to be his praise that in praise we become one with the glory of his presence his spirit and his power on all that would believe I speak the blessedness of the living God of the only Lord in Christ that the peace of God cause you to occupy the earth with great faith. That the wisdom of God make you to understand that it is not necessary that you make him understand. But just as Abraham, you simply say, God has said, and that is what I do. For I am the doing of his will. Have you not read that I, the Lord, have said, It's not I, but the Father that works through me. And have I not called you to do and believe the same? That it is not you, but it is the Father that works through you. How great is the Lord and the Christ, the only, true, faithful, who has made us to be one in who he is.
in all your sermons and your summarizing, do you assault or do you inherit? Do you insult or do you glorify the Lord? Here, nations of the earth, the Lord our God is one God, one Lord, one Savior, one Redeemer, one people, one nation, one God, one heaven, one earth. And in it today, God is doing wonders. No one called yourself here today. But the Lord, He has made the call. By the counsel of God's word, what you propose in your mind to do, God will increase it the more until you cannot believe in yourself. And as Abraham, you have to believe God said it. There's no turning back. There's no place to go. Can you put your hand to the plow and turn back? Does that make you fit for the kingdom? Can you believe that God is one? And His Word is so complete and so perfect that in His Word, He has given you the confidence to believe Him. In the name of Jesus, there is great power in the identity of His nature, His Spirit, and His wonder. Faith, attitude, and action. He who dwells in the shelter of the secret place, the Sethra of the Most High God, will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. You deliver me. And the reason is because I have made my, the Lord my dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. And no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague will come near you because you've made the Lord your dwelling place. Father, we worship you, we praise you, we glorify you. And not as someone trying to do the will of God. But as someone who believes, Jesus, you are the will of God. And that you abide in us with that will, with that spirit, and with that power. And that in this moment of time, this is the greatest season of your lives. Welcome, everybody. This is a time and a day and a moment and a minute unlike any other, and you have to believe that. You have to wrap your mind around something you can't wrap your mind around. You have to do things. And the more we increase, you do one of two things. You either decrease in the value of your call and your purpose, or you increase because you realize it's not yours. Jesus taught us in so many ways and said, you have to die, you have to lose your identity. You have to forfeit all that you can do, everything you're capable of doing to make yourself who you need to be and what you need to be. You have to relinquish it all, all of it. You can't hold on to some of it. You can't believe in any part of it. You can't believe that the works and the efforts of your doing justifies you in any way, shape, or form. And it's in doing that that we fatigue ourselves and we weary ourselves and then we begin to doubt our own faith and the God that we serve and does he hear me or have I done something wrong? Keeping in mind Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, to everything, to every purpose, to all things, there is a time and there is a purpose under heaven. But the word of God, the new, the new covenant of God, all the word of God is the spirit word. It's the word of the spirit. So with a natural mind, it's impossible 
to understand what it means. But the moment that you open your heart to receive the word, something incredible happens. God gives you the spirit of understanding. Jesus was talking one time, and the disciples said, why, why are you talking in parables? They'd been around him. They'd heard him talk. They'd heard him make things very, very plain, very clear. And then they asked him, they said, why are you, why are you doing this? Why are you talking in parables? Jesus says something incredibly profound. He says, I'm saying it in parables because... I can't tell them in words what I'm trying to say. He says, I'm speaking in parables because their heart is not the soil that will receive the seed. And not only that, but they will try to distort it. They'll try to make it their own. In the New Testament, we, we religiously tend to believe that the rulers of that day that fought against Christ, that denied Christ, didn't believe he was Christ and didn't believe that he was God. But that isn't the truth at all. The word says, and they knew him, and they knew him as God, but they refused to honor him as God. How can you do that? What kind of mind would allow you to know that he is God? And they knew he was God, and they knew he was God, but refused to honor him as God. It's the fear of losing control. Poverty is the fear of losing control. Want is the fear of losing control. The natural mind of man is more confident when he's controlling his poverty than when he loses control to believe for his wealth. The word says it like this. It says the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the will of God. Neither indeed can it be subject to the will of God. And that's the key word right there, the will of God. To everything, there is a season, there is a time, there's a purpose for your elevation, whatever it is, for whatever the will of God. How many times have you said, I know it's the will of God to do X, Y, Z. I know it's the will of God to, and you know that it's the will of God. I know it's the will of God that I should be saved. I know it's the will of God that none should perish, and yet a lot of, a lot perish. A lot of people don't walk in what they know is the will of God. Because the will of God isn't something perceived. The will of God is something reflected. The will of God is something that's manifest. The will of God is something you have to become. Knowing the will of God and being the will of God are two totally different worlds. And it's in walking as the will of God. And what is that? Whatever word you know, whatever word God has revealed, whatever testimony that you bear, you bear recognition of that testimony and you embody that testimony. I know God to be love, so you embody love. I know God to be kind, so you embody kind. And you can't allow what you don't like, what your mind tells you. And for the most part, wars are caused because someone is afraid of losing control. The very thing that God has called us to do, relinquish authority. Relinquish your control. Lay down your life. It's curious, in everything that we have, in different levels that we consider different levels, different opportunities, what more could we do where we are with what we have if we relinquished our power? If we really bowed down, like Michelle was singing this morning, just bow down and worship, but you really bow down and worship God as the one and only God. Everything you need And if it's from any place here on the earth to heaven, if what you need, if what you need is in the kingdom of God's heaven, that's where your faith's going to take you. If you have to die to get there, it's still the will of the Lord. And a hush fell over the crowd. (laughs) But the reason for thinking this way, Paul thought that way. He said, listen, he said, he said, to live is Christ. It's a pretty bold statement. For me to live is Christ. That's a very, very bold statement. For me to live is Christ. Think about what he said. But it would be better for me to die. Because what I need, I can't find here. Now that was Paul, and I'm not saying it's y'all. Because God has things for 
y'all here in the earth. But Paul said, and God told Paul, Paul, you're chosen. You're chosen to suffer many things. This is, this is your call. This is who you are. This is what you'll do. But Paul makes a very, very bold statement, and he says, for me to live is Christ. What did he mean by that? That he thought he was Christ? No, what he's saying is, for me to live is for Christ to be manifest through me. It's who I am. Paul was a man that laid down his life as Abraham did because he believed it's no longer I that lives. He said, the thing that I wouldn't do, I do. The thing that I would do, I can't do. Who will deliver me from this body of sin? And religion stops right there and says, what I didn't want to do, I ended up doing. And what I should have done, I could not do. But Paul says, but what says the word of the Lord? What says the word of the Lord? What is the word of the Lord? Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We're not the conquerors of the world. We're not the conquerors of a generation. We're not the conquerors of an evil mind or an evil concept or an evil perception. We are a generation that are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb to think like God. To think like God. Because if it is God, if it is of Him, through Him, and to Him, then all of it should be that way. It should all be of you, through you, and to you. That's how Jesus walked. Jesus didn't come down to satisfy Himself. He came down to satisfy you. He came down to give you the fullness of what He intended you to be when He spoke the Word and created you. By His Word and by His Word alone were all things created. No one is the Word of God. No one is Jesus Christ but the Word of God and Jesus Christ. But we are the embodiment of that Word and of that power. And when we separate ourselves through our religion and our mindsets, our our doubt, our inability to perceive or conceive that God could actually do something phenomenal through me, then you'll never know more than you can study. You'll never walk beyond the boundaries of your own steps. You'll never build beyond the empire of your resources. It'll never happen. And that's not enough. Not for the kingdom of God to do what the kingdom of God will do. God said it. He said, I send my word and it will, it will accomplish what I send it to do. And be it known to all that hear my voice, God's will is being done in the earth today. God's will has always found a vessel or a voice or a faith through which he would make the invisible attributes of his nature known, always. But because we refuse to relinquish control, because to us to relinquish control means poverty, insufficiency, lacking purpose, without cause, unimportant. And sometimes the very things that we value keep us from being the very value that we are. And the very value that we are is we are created to walk in the image of His power. We are created to bear witness to the freedom, the freedom, the freedom, the freedom of no plague will come nigh your dwelling. The reason we make statements like we do all the time here, only good will happen to me. Only good can happen to you. Because someone somewhere has to pull on heaven, has to take the rope and say, I have the power given me by God according to his creative will and purpose, which I am, to be able to do exactly that, to pull on heaven. He said, those things that you release from the earth will be released from heaven. Certain things can't just be released from heaven, no matter how much God wants it to happen, because his word is yes and in him, amen. And he said, it's going to happen through you. So we come to the limit of our resources and our our capability. We, We end up at some point putting the vastness of all our accomplishments on the line. That's what God will call you to do. So what he told Abraham to do, you heard my word, and you knew it was impossible. You and Sarah knew it was impossible. You knew it was impossible, and that's okay when you know something is impossible for you. But God gave Abraham the word, and the word was his son Isaac, and it was his seed. It was all of his, all of his inheritance. 
And then God said, I want it. But you, because you think I gave it to you, and I didn't give it to you. I gave him to work through you. I gave him so you could identify me. And the word tells us this, this Isaac was the literal representation of Jesus Christ. And this seed was not many, but God said it was many. But this seed was not many, but one, one seed, which is Christ. So, we're at what some people would call a critical time. I call it the greatest season of our lives. Because someone, someone has to believe it. Someone has to stand there. Someone has to make it their motto, their, their focal point, their banner. Someone. Someone has to believe that in their life, there can be no devil. Not deny his existence, but denying his access. Someone, at some point, has to say, the elevation of God's will has to be manifest in us, and that's what we're here to see. Because everyone else has already done the other stuff. And there's a world full of believers that don't even go to church anymore because they've already seen the other stuff. And there's an accumulation, a covert, a seed, a minute particle. As God has always done by the minuteness of a particle, an, uns- an unseen thing, God spoke an invisible word and created the vastness of everything. And that's what he did through Abraham. Abraham, give me your son, your only begotten son. The natural mind in so many ways could have said, Abraham could have said, I must have messed up. There must be something really wrong. Even if you did... There's only one thing for you to do, not count up all the vastness of our sins and disobedience to God, but make one account of one thing. He is obedient, and as he is, so am I in this world. He lives and he breathes through me. He makes the fullness of his will made known through me. If you point your finger at someone else, you're not believing God to be the God that he is. Because in everything that he's created, he made that one thing, you, 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 you. He made that one thing perfect in his will. No matter how fouled, fouled up and foul or fallible you think you are, he is infallible. His way is perfect. My God, this God, the scriptures say, he is perfect. His way, not ways, his way. One way is every way. His way, the way he does everything. The one way he does everything is perfect. So God will call you to do something, and that's what the word is today. God is calling you to do something you can't do. Not something you can do. And don't expect the traditions of men to applaud you when you do something that doesn't vibe with the traditions of men. Can you imagine all the people that could have come to Abraham and say, you're out of your mind? Can you imagine Abraham saying, I, I mean, this, I do this and I lose control over everything. Because it wasn't just about a seed with Abraham and that generation. It was about a reputation. It was the same with a woman. If she couldn't bear seed, it wasn't just that she didn't have children. It was her reputation. Because without a seed, you didn't have one in the day. You were called barren, missing something. So God says to a barren womb and a man far beyond his prime, I'm going to give you a seed. And it's not just a seed, though. Because when God does something, it's not just about getting the job done. It's about heaven being manifest. It's about what he said, the kingdom of God. When you pray, I want you to think this way. I want you to pray this way. Your kingdom come and your will be done. But it has to be done in me like it's done in heaven. Because when it's done in you in the earth that cannot see God as they see him, a whole different dynamic takes place. And that's the will of the Father. 
I love the song, Michelle. What, what a wonderful name it is. And that he didn't want heaven without us. Why? Because heaven can't be seen in its fullness without us. And that's not our decision. We didn't create ourselves. We didn't make this up. God made it up. So the scriptures say, how fearfully and wonderfully made are you? We talk about limitations and boundaries, and yet we still try to work within the clause of those limitations and those boundaries where God exceeds it when he says, do this. As God has said to you, as God has said to you, As God has said certainly to us. God told me a long time ago, he said, this is the only way you can do what I call you to do. You have to preach. You have to declare my word without looking at the faces of the people. So he removed the faces. When you speak, he said, you have to speak to their spirit so you can hear it. And that was a big transition for me. That was a big change of mind. I had to relinquish control because now you can't feed me so I can feed you because then it's you and I. But if it's Christ in me, the hope of glory, then Christ is flowing through me and it doesn't matter what's going on out there. And do you know what that means? You're in dominion. Now God has given you control. People say all the time, God's in control. Well, he can be. He can be. He most certainly can be. Make no mistake, he can be. But if God were to take control, it wouldn't go down for mankind because he's a holy God. And judgment would come. But because he's a merciful, graceful God, he said, I'm giving you dominion. And here's why. If you doubt, if you believe... And when you fail because you have to know that you can only come through Christ, through my son, through the one and only. It's the only way you can do it. And you're about to be introduced to him. So when you do, I can redeem you. Because you have the holiness of God and you have the judgment of God and that's it. But in Christ we have the grace of God. Doesn't mean we do what we want because then you have nothing in Christ. You have nothing in common with him. When we declare it's not our will, but his will be done, then you know who you are. You know what you're created to be. So we go through generations, maybe a generation, maybe a man or a woman will go through generations of family, one, two, maybe three generations. And maybe you follow in the footprints or the steps, or maybe you step totally away because you don't want to be anything kin to what your kin was. But all in all, it's still the same thing until you come to the point that God did with Abraham and says, this is about you laying down your reputation. This is about you laying down your life. This is about you overcoming your emotions and that buck and a half worth of chemistry telling you who you are and when you should be this and when you should be that. And this is when the love of Christ and the manifested power of God's will, which will only be manifest through your faith in obedience to a word that you cannot do. When you get saved, you can't do that. You'll never be good enough. You'll never be kind enough. You'll never preach enough. You'll never fast enough. You'll never plead enough. You'll never cry enough. You'll never give enough. You'll never be kind enough for that to happen. So to all those that deny Christ as Lord and Savior, I ask you this question. Who then is your salvation? And where is it? Because only through Christ do we have salvation the salvation of God. But the salvation of God isn't an end point, and yet it's the fullness. It doesn't just end because we get saved. And it begins, but it's more than a beginning. As he is the first, the last, the beginning, and the end, God gives you the entirety of all that he is at that moment in time. And now the wonder, now the journey begins where he says, seek and you will find. Which means there are areas in your life you're going to, you, you'll look at as Abraham did and say, Abraham, what, what could have went through his mind? doesn't really matter. Because being afraid is not a sin. But living by it is. Being angry is not a sin, but acting on it is. But Abraham said, I'll do as God has said. He went up and he was ready to follow through. And Jesus said, 
God said, you did it. You did it. You did it. So the moment we relinquish our will, something incredible happens, and we relinquish it to the will of the Father. That's where power is. There's probably a world of people that say, I I know it's the will of God to heal me. But I'm not healed. Because your healing is someplace. Your faith will take you. And God is every place. But his glory is manifest in the time and a place to you. As it was to Abraham. As it was to Moses. As it was to Paul. As it was to Elijah. As it was to Elisha. And it's by relinquishing our will. And how do we do that? It's easier than you could possibly imagine. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest, O King James. Take my yoke on you. Feel the weight of my burden. Take it on you. And when you put it on, you don't know it's on because it is no weight. And learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly, and you'll find rest, freedom from fighting to get where you need to go. And you'll find rest to your soul. That's where we are today. God has stirred up the world. I don't believe the devil did this at all. He doesn't have the power to do the will of the Father. Only God does. And only manifesting it through you. The world we stand in is a call to those that will be the will of God. It's God's will. I know it's His will. You can know it's God's will to do a lot of things. It doesn't mean you have become the will of the Father. Healing is the will of God healing is the will of God not that he wants you to be healed of course he does healing is the will of God peace is the will not just knowing it's his will for you to have peace but peace is the will of God. Abraham walked and he was called the father of faith because he walked as the will of God. Because he just did what God said without question. He just did it. Paul warned us. He said, I beseech you, this is the old King James Version, I beseech you therefore, brothers, well, I'm going to split it up a little bit. NIV, ESV, and King James. (laughs) I beseech you therefore, y'all, brothers and sisters, by the mercies or the mercy of God, That in the presentation or presenting yourselves a living sacrifice, which is made holy, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service or which is your worship. We sing the song worship, but did we worship today? This isn't a call of works. This is a call of rest. We work too hard and accomplish too little because we try to sustain our position And the call of God is to the great, to the Abrahams, the Isaacs, the Jacobs. It's a relinquishing of will. How? God will call you. He'll tell you. To one it may be, give the the thousand dollars that you have. It's all you have. It's your name. It's your reputation. Take what you have and sow it based on what I've called you to do. Take all that you have and go preach. I'm going to say to California, because everybody goes to Africa, but no one wants to come to California. California is the new Africa. Right, Michelle? So go, go to California and preach the gospel, and you sell all your Texas property, and... Sorry, Matt. You sell all your Texas property and you move to, to uh, California. Or you leave Malibu, Steve, and you go and you dwell. <laughs> it's not about the place. It's, not about, it's, it's about the season and about the time. And what is time? Time is an event. What does that mean? When I act upon something because God said it. God only acknowledges his time. And his time is his will. Okay? Say it again, okay. Nobody asked, but it needed to be said. 
God's time is his will, and everything has to take place in the time of God, his will, his will. Not knowing his will, not knowing it's his will to bless you, not knowing it's his will to do you well, but being the will that does well. How? Paul said, a two-souled individual is unstable in all their ways, unstable, incapable, irrational, unequipped, not the equivalent of, what, the sum. Who is the sum? Jesus. He is the sum total of all things. The one and only Lord, Savior, and Redeemer. The sum of all things. And he says, come into me. Come into me and be the sum of all that I am. Of course, no one is Christ but Christ and Christ alone. We all know that. But come into the fullness of who I am. Walk in the fullness of my power. Acquaint yourself with me. And know what I'm calling you to do. It's going to turn out better than you would imagine. So God will give you great promises and say something like $7.2 billion. And not ask you if you, do you get what I'm saying? Do you understand what I mean? Do you understand the fullness? Because you sit there and go, have no clue. And God says, good, do what I say. And don't try to explain to me that you don't understand what I just said. Let my understanding become yours. So I can show you my glory. Where is the glory of the Lord? It's in the will of the Father. God's told all of you to do something. He's spoken to you. He's revealed it to you. And to the hard-headed, he comes to us in dreams. God has to knock me out sometimes to get a word through to me when it comes to me doing something. So he does. And then he says, do it. Or you have sold the kingdom for a price. And I say, yes, Lord. Whatever it takes, God will get through to you. But no matter what he does, he did wonders and miracles. They knew him as God, but refused to acknowledge him as God. Let's see if he does a wonder that only God could do. Nicodemus, the leader, we know you have come from God. How dense Can the natural mind be? It rejects the power of God. And when someone does something that offends you, you shove them away. They were the will of God. You should have embraced it. And how many weeks, months, or years do you walk through until you embrace the will of God? Bless those that persecute you and say all manner of evil against you. You know, you you have a tendency... You can have a tendency, if more than one or two people know you, to get negative comments, to call you all kinds of crazy things. And there was a time that I would just say, I don't want to see, I don't want to hear, and I don't. I don't like to see or hear. But then there's another time where I say, show me, so I can say it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Show me. Prove you your own self in the faith. Show me. How amazing. How wonderful. That it doesn't matter. The will of God is being done. God, you said, and this could bankrupt me. How wonderful is that? I bless your holy name. God said, I'll do. You can't lose no matter what if you're confirming the word of the Lord. If you believe those things which you say will come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say. Hang on. Doesn't mean if you say it, it will come to pass. If you know your own word, if you know what you say will come to pass, then you have the faith of the centurion. What did he say? He didn't just come up and say, well, I'm saying it, do it, and it happened. He said, here's how I know the power of word. When I say something, I do it. Or they do it. When I'm told to do something, I do it. I know the power of the word. You know what the word is? It is finished. That's the word. When you believe those things you say, how many times you go around saying, I need to do this, I'm going to do that, and you don't do any of it. Watch over your word if you want your words to be words of power. When you believe those things which you say will come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say. What, God, what is God teaching us here? His will. How about God say, well, it's my will to do it, but I'm not going to. I'm busy. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> sorry, I'm so, sorry, I'm so busy ruling heaven and earth and the universe, I just forgot. I mean, I intended to, I meant to, but 
Next time. There should be no next time if you want it this time. Be the will of the Father. Not by might, not by power. Nobody can do it. We know that. But it's the will of God. Not just it is in his will. I know his will. You know it is the will of God that you are the will of God. Do you believe I am the will of God? And your faith is going to take you someplace. God is going to keep causing you to interface with whatever that is. Whatever that is. Whatever it is. So your faith takes you beyond that to wherever it is. What God has for you is. And it's not about a geographical location in the sense. It can be go up Mount Moriah and offer to the Lord. But it wasn't the distance of the journey. It was the journey of the heart and the mind. God said, my seed will be as the seed, uh, sand of the earth without number. And today it most certainly is. But the power behind that seed was its one. We're referring to Christ. Believe Christ is working through you in ways that you cannot even fathom in the deepest recesses of your imagination. God is doing wonders in me. And let your mouth, let your ear, hear your mouth agree with God. This is my worship. This is my worship. You'll do anything God says if you relinquish your will. It's all you have to do. It's that easy. If you stop holding on to your reputation, your position, and everybody in the world has a reputation for something. Some like a bad reputation. Some like a a mean reputation. Some like a loving reputation. Everyone has, everyone has a reputation. And no matter how wonderful or how horrible it is, it still has to be relinquished to the will of the Father. Because you can't be great enough. I can't be. No one can be great enough to manifest the will of the Father. And we can't just go do the will of God. Jesus said, I can do nothing. This is the Son of Almighty God. I can do nothing except what the Father says and what the Father reveals. So to you, to you, Matthew, it will be multiplied 30 times to begin. 30 times. 60 times. Can you believe for 100 times? What would you do? How could you, how can you quantify? How can you imagine? How would you even figure that to be? What would it look like? What would that look like to you? You don't have an imagination for that. And God said, I'll do beyond your imagination, exceeding, abundant, and above. That's our call. So God says to me, go preach my word and build nothing challenge. Okay, how do I do that? How do I finance that? How do I support that? I mean, and God says, I got you covered. How wonderfully he did and has and is. Because I can see, I can watch, and I can do and have the reputation, as can you, of what someone could do. But Can you bear witness to look and see what God has done? There's been believing in your life, Matthew, believing in your life, Lori, believing great times, exciting times, trying times, blind times, dark times, sunshine times. But this time was prophesied by me as one. And confirmed and prophesied by others. This is the greatest season of your life. This is the hour of the Lord. You will know the blessing of God. As great and wonderful as all is that is, you've done because there was an inheritance of man. There was a blessing of lineage. 
But there's a lineage and a blessing of inheritance that exceeds your ability to rationalize and to sit down and punch in numbers and make them work. What God is calling you to do won't work in the mathematics of man's design. But the sum total is God. And so what the Lord is simply saying is beyond even all that's ever been prophesied and all that's ever been said, God is calling you higher. Well, what does that mean? Is it a distance between heaven and earth? Yes, exactly that. Exactly that. The further from here you get and the closer to there you get. That's the equation. No one can serve you in what you do, both of you. No one can serve you. There is no one to serve you. As there was no one to serve Abraham, there was no one to serve you in this. And in that is the glory of God's heaven. In that the Lord will say, I will bear you up. I will hold you. There's no one to serve you. No one thinks the way you do. You have no confidence in anyone around you. As I have called you to be confident, not one. But you will. Because you'll know that it's called the upgirding of the Lord. Rechu tam usheleapa. Reshu tam ashuleapa. Girding of the heavens. Foundation of God. Holy city. Holy mountain. So it will call you to give it all away. To sow it all away. As though you were trying to get rid of it. Why would God do that? Abraham? That one is known. And in this, an unknown identity. And that will be called blessed in the earth and will remain generations. To this, God, we give you glory and praise. And on this I speak and confer the word of the Lord. Thus says, God says, my word is with you. And I will cover and carry you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For me, as Paul said, as the word says for me in my house, there's only one confirmation to me that I am a man of God or a prophet of the Lord or a pastor. It's not how much I study. And I study a lot. I've studied a lot most of my life. I love to study. I love to study the Word. But it's the Spirit of the Lord that says through me what I couldn't possibly know. It tells me things that I can't figure out and only after He tells me can I see it in the Word. Same thing with you today. God is doing wonders. This is the greatest season of your life. Such a great season. Such an incredible moment of time. Let God remove all the pebbles and make the way straight. Let God build a foundation. Let God do it. I walk today knowing I am called of God. But in order, to, in order to know that, you have to do the Abraham walk. You have to do the Elijah walk. The Elisha walk. And then you have people who say, oh, I'll turn away from that. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, here's the call, y'all. Not into numbers. Here's the call. If you're going to follow me, take up your cross. Lay down your life. And follow me. 
You may not like me. You may not like my reputation. You may not like what I say. But you have to love me because I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. This is an all in or all out. And it's the easiest walk because Christ bore all that for us. We are the interpretation of His will. Because it really is no longer I that lives but Christ is living in and through me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Greater is He. Greater is He. I can do anything. I can do everything. I can do all things. If you were to look down from a different position in heaven and look at yourself, you would say, why did I take a moment's time considering, let alone reconsidering? I could have done anything. And I didn't have to have the will to do it. What's our excuse? It's what God said. What's your excuse? Look at the wonders of heaven. Don't be the religious leaders that say, Nicodemus. But he wanted to believe. We know. Who's we? All of us guys. We all know. We know you were sent from God. We know. They're going to crucify you. They're going to put you down because they're afraid of one thing. They're afraid you are God. They're pretty sure you are. So when you demonstrate God and you do a wonder, they're going to come after you. But nonetheless, it's all still the Word of God. Because as Isaiah prophesied, they'll be, they will reject you and they'll cast you out, reject the cornerstone. Let's not be that generation in our generation, however we interpret it. Let's be the generation that says, as he is, so am I in this world. That particular scripture is referring to his love. That's a pretty high call. As he is, as he loved, so do I love in this world. And all these things you've seen him do, Jesus said, here's my call to you. All these things you've seen me do, you'll do, and greater things than this. There's only one God. There's only one Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Only always have us been and only always ever will be. Only one Lord, only one Savior, only one Jesus, only one Christ. And none of us are him. I'm not him. You're not him. We're not him. No one died for you but him. But his one and onlyness abides in you. So when they say, well, that was Jesus and I'm not, then you say, He's in you. He abides in you. Why do you separate? Why do you let your denying, doubting, unbelief, your casual concept of who God is divert you from the power of the truth? The power of Jesus was this. He was God made flesh. What a wonder the word is. How did he do that? How did God make man? Then God make himself man. So he could become God in man. So no matter what man did, he could forgive him and make him like himself and elevate him and crown him with glory and give him eternal life. How did he do that? And demonstrate his greatness, only a fool will look up and say, there is no heaven, there is no God, there is no Lord. Let's be wise. This is the greatest season of your lives. If you believe it, give the Lord praise this morning. My God, holy God, we worship you, God. We bless your mighty name. Angie, this is, this is, the this is of all this is seasons of time. And God has allowed you to see all that swirls around. They come up and they tag you from behind. They tried to catch you unawares recently, just days ago. Try to catch you unawares. Tug on your shirt and say, let's see if this will make her prove to us that she is not who she says she is. This recently happened. And God says, let us prove that we are one. I and you and you and me. As a branch can't bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. So rejoice in the Lord.
Go back into your home and rejoice in the Lord your God. No one is your source. No one is your resource. No one is your income. And some have held this over you, saying, then what will you do and where will you go? Is it all right if I say a little bit? Where will you go and what will you do? In a month's time, you'll be baking for bread. But God has said, they will beg for the bread you have for them. And you are the breadwinner of the household. For you are the winner through Christ. And He has that bread of life in you. This is the greatest season of your life. As God turns you around, He'll turn everything else around. That wonder is somewhere, and your faith is taking you where it is. This is that hour. God, we give you praise. We do. We give you praise. My God, my Father, my Lord, and my Christ, holy and mighty God. You know when God's speaking, your spirit tells you. You can't deny, and no one can defy God's greatness in this generation. The Lord wants you to know how approved He is when He blesses you. How He approves of your blessing. How He approves of what He's done in you. God wants you to know that He knows. And He wants you to know that He knows that you know. How good He is with it. He wants you to know that He knows you know. Your faith in Him did this. And you can stand back and say, I feel like a stranger sometimes in what is built around me. And many will call an empire above empires. And you'll say, this is no empire. This is a kingdom. This is the kingdom of God. There's the people that are coming out, standing up, that don't contend for anything but the favor of the Lord. And that, in solitude of surrender to the promise and the purpose of God. Because no matter how many promises He's made, everyone is kept. And He's placed that power under your feet. You're standing on a treasure. He that dwells in the secret place. What is that? Something waiting to be revealed. He that abodes, he that abides in the secret place, the Sethra, the pavilion of the Lord, will abide, remain under the covering of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Would you stand with me this morning? God, we worship you. We praise you. We thank you. We love you. If you're watching today and you say, I want to know this, pray this with me. Jesus, you are the one and only Christ, the only Lord and Savior. I may not understand it all, but I'm created to believe it all. I receive you, Savior. Come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me new in you. I am born again in you. Fill me with your spirit, your word, and your wonder. Right here, right now. This I ask in faith, knowing you answer me in Jesus' name. You pray that prayer with your heart. You are. This is the beginning of the greatest season of your life. God, we worship and we praise you. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord God has spoken. Let's pull on heaven together today. If you have your wristband, you can tug on that. If you don't, tug on your neighbor's. Pull on heaven. Why do we do this? Jesus said, whatever you release from the earth, you release from the heavens. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. The literal word is the kingdom of God is within your grasp. And it's a mighty heaven. And we need a mighty rope. And we pull on the heavens of God right now and we declare, Hear, O heavens, give ear, O earth, for the Lord God has spoken. Let the glory of the word of the Lord that has been spoken today, the invisible become visible, the intangible tangible, the unknown known, the unseen seen, the glory of his wonder and the will of his spirit and power 
would be manifest in 10 days something is signed sealed and delivered in 10 days I put this before you who will pick up the pen and say it's me Lord a new opportunity the dawn of a new day some will say run 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 but the Lord says son don't be afraid of those that run they're not running away like they say they're running in a circle they'll run back feel like they're going to have a heart attack if they don't get to the place as the deer pants after the water brook so their soul belong after the Lord you bear witness and testimony to that power for God is for you and upon this you can depend the word of the Lord is sure and he has shown you that in whom you can believe he has shown you in whom the word of the Lord is he has shown you that his word is in the earth running swiftly and accomplishing that which he has purposed Great is God. It's raining today. It's raining today. 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 Today it's raining. By the dawn of tomorrow, the soil be wet with the rain of the Lord. And the seed will be committed to do what it has done because it has been sown and the rain has drenched it. And it is transforming even now into the thing that God from the beginning has intended it, predestined it, and called it to be. You are that people today in this house. You are that generation. You are those chosen and called of God. This is not a tomorrow word. This is a today word. This is a so great of faith I've not seen no, not in all of Israel. Speak the word now. Jesus says, I can go. We can take a minute. He says, no, right here, right now. Jesus smiles within his heart. And he said, so great faith I have not seen. Why? Because the word of the Lord occupies the here and now. Right now it begins. Right now, today. Don't let your eye tell you what's taking place. Let your spirit and your spirit of your mind show you what God is doing and what is done. It will make itself known in the earth and you will bear witness that you did hear the word of the Lord and you did walk in the power of that word and you were baptized in the word of its power. This is that hour. And it cannot be denied. For the word of the Lord is sure. The word of the Lord is yes and in him.